Pam Staff, and he's, I don't know if he's still alive, but he, he's full Am Staff, and he just looks like a lar much larger version of Coco. He looks like a King Corso. But, um, anyways, uh, she just, when, she only gets aggressive whenever it's another big dog. So, anyway, she, she runs out here, and that little, the little dog, the little pug, take, one of the pugs takes off running, Tez, the one, my mom's, the one that she ended up taking a plug out of, um, runs, and I'm like, Coco, come now, and I made my sound that I make whenever I want her to come to me. Well, she came to me, but before she came to me, Taz came to me because she was over there sniffing that other pit bull and, like, trying to see what was up because this is her territory. So, anyways, you guys, there's a pit bull, a pug over there, and then I have a pit bull and a pug over by the car, and I've got my pit bull by her collar, and I'm trying to pick up the pug. In the process of picking up the pug, my dog grabs her and fucking takes a chunk out of her, which freaked me out because, you know, she's she stayed here whenever I was in Vegas. She stayed over here. She This was her babysitter, and whenever I go out of town and, you know, stuff like that, a lot of times they'll either go to my house or, or Coco comes over here, but... Usually, it's easier for them if I bring her stuff over here because she has a dog house here and I have pretty much anything that I need, you know, for her portable and they have extra dog stuff here. Plus, I keep an extra dog run just because she breaks them all the time. Can somebody please tell me why are these 90-pound dogs breaking these 200-pound dog leads? This is a 250-pound dog lead and Coco has broken, she's done broke two of them. This is the third one and uh, look. It's already got a break where I had to put it back together. Um, you can see where, like, the red stuff's off of it. Look, where I've already had to put it back together. That's crazy. It just got it. Literally, um, how long we had it? Four, three, three days, I think? Yeah, three days. The day that, uh, the day that I first started doing the yard work, whenever I very first started doing the when I found out there was hornets or yellow jackets or whatever over there. And when I first told you guys about that, that day is the day. And it's been, that's how long ago it was. And she has broken, like, it's almost like clockwork. Every week, a 250-pound uh, dog run. And she has gained weight. So, I, I she's only going to continue. Um breaking them if i don't do something other than tie them together real tight you know something's gonna happen and she's gonna end up breaking one and i'm, I'm terrified that she's gonna hurt herself by getting hit by a car or something like that yeah i'd love to tell you the story of how i got her and what happened when she was little because i picked this i had this dog before she was born she was like promised to me Actually, I had a boy dog promised to me I was really excited about. And I was already naming him and everything. Yo, like, he was he was mine. And the, the litter had 10 puppies. And um, out of three litters of 10, this was the third litter of 10. All 10 lived except for one of them out of this one. But out of the first two, all 10 lived, which is crazy. And the, her mom ain't much, I guess her mom's about her size, maybe a little skinnier. Coco's a pretty fat girl. She's a thick chick. But, I mean, um, Dozer and Baby Girl had three litters of puppies, and I had picked out a boy before they were even born. I knew what I wanted. And um, Preston, their son came over one night and told me, you know, both, uh, both the breeders were in jail and that the father the puppies had been born and that the father had picked the runt up and shook her by her head because she was squealing and crying and just being really vocal she was a barker a squealer and she was the littlest one so she had to make extra noise to get food and stuff you know and she was she was a scrappy little chick and I'm going to tell you what, you guys, this is the most interesting, loving, loyal, smart, just, she is so intelligent. And 
after we took her, you know, that she was only five weeks old, wasn't even old enough for me to have her yet. And I was like, well, I guess I'm getting a girl instead of a boy. There was nothing going to change my mind when I seen those little cuts on her head. And she still has scars, you know. My, I don't want to bother her right now, but if she wants to look and show you guys, like, I don't want to, like, mess with her eye. But anyways, she has scars on her face where he did that to her. And, um... He could have crushed her skull so they were kind of scared you know to keep her there and i got really fortunate because any other dog wouldn't have been the right dog for us she's been our dog since the day she came in and what made her even more our dog she started off being my dog that night her birthday is january i'm um, january her birthday is july the 15th i'm sorry um my husband had gone fishing and um Whenever he was gone fishing, or maybe he was at the boat. I'm pretty sure he was fishing that night, though. And I put her in my hoodie pouch. And uh, it was chilly in the house because of air conditioning. And I stuck her in my front hoodie pouch, carried her around with me. And whenever he came in from wherever he was at, I showed her to him. And I think I sent a photo first and told her, told him she was ours, but I don't think he believed it. Either way... Halloween rolls around and you know we've had her for a while the girls are super attached I wouldn't have even got her if I hadn't been for Jesse asking me to get her a pit bull puppy for five years straight because when I was in prison she had a blue healer that they wouldn't allow her to keep and um, I guess they gave it to one of her cousins and it wasn't you know she was upset by that so she wanted a dog of her own anyways so Coco gets loose. The kids are all running out to get ice cream. We live by Iroquois Park, and um, that was where her mom and dad lived, right behind us at that junk at that same um, that neighborhood. That uh, I don't want to say junky neighborhood because it's not a bad neighborhood, but um, it was just kind of the the part where we lived. Anyways, the the way that the ice cream truck was, you couldn't. There were so many kids. You just couldn't see. Coco went around the truck. She was still a puppy, so she was very small at the time. You know, you got to think from July to October, she was born. And, like, sometime in June or July, she was five weeks old when I got her on July the 15th. The night, it might have been or the late night of the 14th, but I'm pretty sure that I had written down the 15th was the day we got her. Um, yeah, that's right, because the, my husband's birthday is the 14th, and he had gone for his birthday. Um, so anyways, long story short, um, we did not see our dog anywhere. She went around the ice cream truck. Both girls were out there. My niece is out there. My daughter's friend's out there. And Coco disappears. Nowhere to be seen. We are freaking out. We're looking like all of us are all around the neighborhood just screaming her name. We know that she knows her name. We know she'll come to us. And I had my niece staying with me at the time. She was out there with us. It was all of us. I mean, there were so many people looking for her, and no one could find her. We were tripping. Y'all, we thought for sure. I, I could feel like I kept saying my dog is somewhere in this neighborhood. I'm going to see a dog in somebody's yard, and I'm going to have to. I'm going to know it's Coco. I'm going to have to 